Welcome back to Timberborn, everybody, and welcome back to the Iron Isles. Things are going pretty well at the moment. We have two engines. You can see one of them off in the distance a little bit. You can see one of them a little closer to us right here by what will soon be District 3. But before we start talking about those and before we start turning things into new districts, there's a couple of changes that I want to make, and I also want to deal with this water problem that we've run into recently. Specifically, I just don't love the fact that we don't have over a thousand water. We used to be very good at stockpiling it, and we are due another drought in the not too distant future, so I figure we should do something about this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on this natural reservoir a little bit more. And essentially, I'm going to place another five of these deep water pumps because that's about all I can do. Now, I would like to go in and probably rearrange some of my large water tanks. I think we could probably look at getting them into a central spot. I think these ones over here are just never really filling up. So we can probably do something to get these things to be a bit more efficient. If absolutely necessary, and this might be a little bit silly, I, I could get six of them on top of these houses. I'm not really sure how I would get my beavers up there, but I I can probably figure something out. We could probably work that out if we really wanted to. I don't love the idea of putting the tanks up there, but we'll get to that. That's, that's a later kind of problem. Now, my thinking for how I'm going to do this is very simple. I'm going to get rid of this gravity battery because... If we're totally honest, it's it's not really that necessary, and we're going to talk a little bit more about gravity batteries in just a second, but it's just it's just not. It's just not that necessary. It's not something that we urgently need. Uh, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and put a bunch of double platforms in here. I'm going to bring a path around like so, and I'm just going to go and do one, two, three, four, five deep water pumps right there. And that's going to keep us pretty good. That's going to sort things out. That's hopefully going to get us into a good spot. And that's hopefully going to just help us out. That's hopefully going to give us a whole bunch more water and start filling up all of these tanks and getting us back to and keeping us in a good place. Now, of course, the issue is that we are doubling the number of pumps that are pulling water out of this space. So during a drought, what's going to happen is this space is going to empty. I don't think we've seen it empty yet, but it's going to 100% it's going to. And so we do absolutely need more water tanks. But I'm not going to deal with that right now. Because I mentioned gravity batteries and I mentioned we deal with it. And that's where this space comes in down here. Because I've been looking at these guys and I've been thinking, well, why is this one in the middle is the only one that's being built? The other ones haven't been touched. All four of them are empty. There's no progress whatsoever. This middle one's at 75%. And I realized it's because this is the only one that the beavers can reach because of this little path here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm I'm kind of thinking of just taking these out completely. Because I just don't necessarily know that we need them. I can't confidently say that they're actually necessary. I can't really see a reason to have them because... I mean, this engine is here and we're probably not going to run out of logs... So this just feels like a waste of materials to build all these things. So I'm just going to go in and delete those. And I'm going to go in and, and I'm going to delete these double platforms. I have a couple of ideas for how we could give the beavers access to all of the gravity batteries. And it's not really a set of terrible ideas. It's just a bunch of ideas. But I just I just don't think we need them. I think it's that simple. I just I just don't think we need them. And speaking of things that we might not need... This forester might not be needed. I'm not too sure what possessed me to put it there. I think if I remember right, it was just a cool spot for a forester, but it has no range. So what I'm actually going to go ahead and do is build another forester on this island. And I'm thinking of just putting it right about there or right about here, to be completely honest. And that way we can give them access to this little space where they can actually grow some trees and tend to those trees. We do already have two spaces for lumberjacks up here, so that's going to help us out. But honestly, we could probably just do with one. And so I think what I'll actually do is just actually get rid of those and go in and say we'll have just a single 
lumberjack right about, say, there. And once we get a path in there, they will function and that'll be great. And so really at this stage, I don't know what's stopping me from getting this district going. It has a source of water. It has a source of food. I guess the only thing that's that's holding me back is uncertainty about the water situation because to be quite honest i just i just don't know i just i just don't know about this water situation i think what might be a bit of an idea is to come in here and maybe we go and build a few levees like this we'll build a few levees there and maybe we do another large water tank. And that way this place can have up to 600 water stored at any one time, which would be kind of fantastic. I don't think we're necessarily going to get that, but we do have this natural reservoir, which is fantastic. But if we could do that, it will help us out. It will help the district out and that'll be good. If we could get the bakery going as well, that would be fantastic because it's going to be two sources of food between the potatoes and bread. And then once the water thing's sorted, that's going to be food, that's going to be water. We'll have a forester who can plant trees. We'll have a lumberjack that can chop those down. We have a place to turn the logs into planks, turn the planks into gears, turn some logs into paper, and turn some paper into books. So, I mean, long story short, this district is set up to produce some things, and that's great. So I think what we'll do is... We'll hold off just a little bit because I think my main priority right now kind of needs to be this. And this is going to be a hell of a project. It's it's going to be a hell of a project. But fortunately, we do have 180 logs in storage. And looking at District 1, 59 of those are in this district. So this isn't going to take forever to build. It's just going to take a little bit. Now, while all of that's going on, I do want to look at the number cruncher which is a building, it's a complicated machine that will solve calculations without beavers operating it. It needs 500 horsepower, but every hour it will generate 10 science. I feel like this thing is essential for moving towards golems, because the golem part factory is 500 science, the golem assembler is 750 science, the charging station is 200, the control tower is 1000. So I think the number cruncher is going to be a really important building and it's honestly not huge which is good that's that's a very very good thing now what i'm thinking about this is 500 horsepower is not bad because what we're doing right now is this network on this side over by district 2 is generating about 1200 uh power horsepower at any one time and I don't remember what the exact network draw happens to be, but I think it was somewhere around, I mean, we can total it up, I think. I don't think it's actually going to tell me, but I think it was somewhere around like 300 or 400. So I think the number cruncher could reasonably go in District 2, which would give District 2 its own little function, I guess. It would give it something to do. And I also love the idea of putting it right here. I think that's a really cool spot for it. So <laughs> I'm actually gonna do that as silly as it might be. I'm just gonna put some platforms here, some platforms here, and I'm going to say that we wanna go ahead and just mark those resources for demolition, and we'll go ahead and just prioritize all of this. And that way we can build the number cruncher right there over the water. It's gonna be an interesting spot for it. And we just need to provide power. Now the power situation is... I mean, it's not really going to be all that tricky. It's a relatively simple thing that we can deal with. Because what I can do is take out these stairs. I can go and say, take out, say, those paths right there. And all I need to do is stairs, stairs, and a couple of platforms like this. And then what I can do is, uh, well, I might need to make some, oh boy. I am going to make some slight changes here. This needs to be replaced, so those buildings don't have power, but this just needs to be replaced with a T intersection that comes around like so, and then we just run power down to here, which is totally fine by me. I suppose we could go ahead and put the, uh, the platforms back up there, so just like that, and then what we can do is a right-hand turn or a 
right angled turn. We'll go across like this as well, and we'll just do this. And that should give us everything we need. Now, I do want to prioritize this little section, I think. I think that's going to be kind of important to get the path going again. And then what we can do is go into science. We can go to number cruncher. This thing needs 30 planks. It needs 100 gears, which is kind of ridiculous, and 25 metal blocks. But it does look kind of cool. It absolutely does. So it's 100% going to live there. And I think that's a really cool spot. I'm going to be honest. I think that's an absolutely awesome spot for that thing. So that's absolutely perfect. This is coming along really nicely. And this kind of opens the door for us to start moving towards golems. Because we just need planks, we just need gears, and we just need metal blocks. So what I think we can probably do is have our golem production... Maybe it should be by District 3 as well. What if we tried to turn this island into golem production? What if we put the district gate right about here and said this island is a dedicated golem production space? That way, District 3 is producing both the books and also the golems for the entire colony. I think that would be kind of cool. I've got to be honest. I, I really, I really like that idea. I also love how quick District 2 is at doing anything because let's be honest, they have nothing else to do down here. It's kind of great. Oh, and just like that, we have a drought coming in in three days time. So hopefully we can get these guys built. Shouldn't really take too much longer to do all of that. And I guess in terms of water, my goal really is just to fill all the tanks that we have. These little tanks are barely full. These guys are struggling a little bit. And uh, these guys over here are not doing too great either. So hopefully we can get some, uh, some progress on all of this. And that's hopefully going to help us out in terms of the drought. I am a little bit concerned, uh, a lot concerned actually that if we do suck up all of this water, it's going to be a pretty major problem. But I think we're kind of just going to need to experiment. Although I will say, I'm very tempted to get rid of these five pumps right here and move them out into the water. Because what I could do, if I happen to want to, is this and this. And then I could go and put some water pumps like this. So we just have this massive row of pumps and from that i could again if i wanted to bring this sort of out and and around like this and that would be the whole thing the only thing is it kind of blocks the swimming spot for the beavers and i don't love that i know that's silly i know that doesn't matter and i know i could move it but i i like that we have that although i could put it over here and over here might be better yeah, I think, <laughs> I think, I think putting it over there might be the better idea. Let's, uh, let's get rid of this, uh, oh, do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? Is this worth doing? I guess it would free up some more space for farms. Not that we need, actually, we are, wait, no, 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 no. Two, three, five is district two food. I was about to say, how do we drop 6,000 food? We're fine. I, I, I feel like freeing up some extra farming space wouldn't be a terrible idea. I just know that getting rid of these guys right now would be a terrible idea. So what I'll do is, I guess, uh, prioritize the platforms for now and get the paths around there. I probably should connect it at the bottom as well. Oh man, this is this is a whole thing. Uh, this guy is going to move. It's, it's going to look a little bit silly otherwise. And... Actually, if I wanted to, I could put a district gate in here and build a little bridge over, which I feel like I might as well do since we have the space for it. So something like this as an additional connection to that district seems fine by me. I could probably do the same in here as well, but I think this is this is ridiculous enough as, as it is. This isn't really something I'd... Uh, I don't really plan these episodes, but this is definitely not something I'd plan to do today, but here we are. We're building this ridiculous thing, and it's going to be the source of District 1's water moving forward. It's probably going to drain this lake, and that's just something we're going to have to deal with. <laughs> let's let's just get this thing built. It's going to be ridiculous, but it's going to be great. And as the sun rises on the colony, we should see in the background the water starting to dry up. The drought has started, so this is potentially 
gonna be a really interesting time for the Iron Isles. And I say that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a nine day drought and I don't think we've ever been sitting at less than 1,500 water at the start of a drought for a while. Number two, it is going to hurt our power production, although this space should keep going. Looking at it, we are generating more than enough, which is perfect. So food production in District 1 is going to continue. The food production on this island, however, is not. And even if we build the Number Cruncher right now, which surprisingly, we have a lot of gears in this district, I don't think we're going to be finishing the Number Cruncher until the end of the drought. But regardless, we have some gears and this thing is hopefully going to be done at the end of the drought. It doesn't really matter even if it does get finished right now, because obviously we don't have any power. So this thing isn't going to work during a drought, at least not in its current state, which honestly is is fine. The droughts are at the end of a cycle anyway, so it's, it's not the end of the world. This is coming together, which is fine by me. And then I guess now we have to ask ourselves the question of what are we going to do with District 3? Because at this stage... I mean, it is relatively self-sufficient, right? We have a bunch of things down here that could reasonably be worked and and maintained by people in the district itself. So why don't we do that? Why don't we take the plunge? Why don't we, we, we take this risk, disconnect all of this and go in with the district gate? And then all we need to do is connect the rest of this together and suddenly we have a bunch of things in this district there are minus ah there we go there's 18 vacancies here which is fine by me because if i go out we've got 32 unemployed beavers 25 of those are in district one so what we can do is migrate that population from district one to district three we'll migrate 10 of them we'll migrate 20 of them. And so what that should do now in District 3 is give us currently 20 unemployed beavers. If I run the simulation though, uh, and I switch myself to District 3, we can see there's now two unemployed beavers and we should have 20 beavers making their way across that bridge to run the new district, which means we should see some construction get started on uh, these wooden stairs, for example. That would be kind of fantastic. I think that needs to be a priority. And also on this uh, this deep water pump right there, because right now this district doesn't actually have any water. So very quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new route from District 1 going to District the 3rd, and it's going to be for water. Now what we'll do on this is set some limits. So District 1, uh, water... Oh man, this is uh, <laughs> this is a bit, it's a bit much. Uh, let me remind myself once again: low anything below this in our district is not going to be carried out. So anything underneath, wow, the water in that district eight forty seven right now. That's actually quite bad. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Well, hopefully we can figure things out. We should have people working here. We should be starting to generate water for this district, and so we should manage. And we should have this guy getting built in no time as well. So really, it's it's just going to be a case of allowing this district a little bit of time to figure itself out. We do have a little bit of water in here. We have a lot of food in here. And so District 3, I think, will hopefully manage. I, I, I'm going to give it time, is what I'm going to do. Although, like I said, I, I do like the idea of it being our golem factory. So... A golem parts factory is 500 science. I can unlock that. We have that. It's 50 planks, 25 gears, 15 metal. The metal is going to be tricky. We're going to have to ship that from District 2 to District 3, but not necessarily the end of the world. Although looking at this, I assume we're going to need three of these guys. So 450 power for uh, three golem part factories to make the bodies, the arms, and the heads. So let's unlock this and see how big it is. Oh... Oh, that's a fair bit chunkier than I thought it would be, but it is solid, which means it can be stacked. So let's, let's get rid of, oh man, do I want to do it as a part of District 1 instead of 3? I feel like I actually probably should. 
Uh, can I clear out those bushes? I cannot. Okay. Let's... Let's mark all resources for demolition. Let's let's clear that island. I really hope that wasn't the only place I was getting berries from. We'll clear the island and we're going to figure out some way to create a factory. I'm not really too sure how this is going to work, but we'll figure it out. Uh, the Golem Assembler takes, I guess, what is that? A body, four arms, and oh man, it takes, it takes four arms. So does that... The arms, oh, the arms don't take as long to make, though. They're four and a half hours each. So four and a half and four and a half is what? Nine? So in the time it takes to make four arms, you can make one body and one head. So you do actually only need three factories. And then every 18 hours, those three factories will turn out enough parts to make one golem. So that's okay. That's, that's actually totally fine. And I guess the factories, like I said, I kind of just want to stack them. I think it would look kind of interesting if these guys were just like a tower. And then the assembler can be somewhere else. The charging stations can be around. I think this is just going to be Golem Island. That's that's kind of how I'm going to consider it. Now, in other exciting news, we have these five new pumps going. So I think at this stage, I am just going to get rid of these original five that we have to clear up that space. And I can also go in and I suppose just get rid of these paths around here so we'll go and say delete uh, buildings to get rid of the paths we'll delete these guys and i'm also going to mark that resource for demolition i'd like to prioritize that please and i'd like to get a little path that just comes out here so all of this space can be used for wheat which i think is oh this needs a path as well oh why didn't i uh, why have i got it facing that way that seems kind of that seems kind of silly, but all right, we'll do this. And uh, yeah, the rest of this space can be used for wheat, I suppose. That's 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 fair enough. So just all of of this essentially is is going to be for wheat, and that's totally fine. I could bring a bridge out here as well if I wanted to, but honestly, this is fine. This is this is uh, this is ridiculous, is what this is. But it has helped. We are up to one thousand three hundred forty-one water, which is considerably more than we had. And uh, let's see, building needs water, that's fine. I don't think there's any beavers that are super thirsty. This one's injured, but we do have a medical bed in District 3. We do have a grindstone in District 3, so we're kind of just waiting on this beaver going and dealing with that, I suppose. Not really too sure why you're not going and dealing with that. You do have, you do have some medical facilities available to you. There you go. And I do have a couple more on the way. We have another medical bed here. We have another uh, teeth grindstone here. I guess they just don't have the logs. Yeah, they got four logs in the district. I guess a lot of those are getting taken by things over here. And that's probably fair enough. In fact, what might be a bit of an idea is going ahead and prioritizing these stairs just to get that out of the way. And then I'd like to go in and say, let's grow chestnut trees just in in all of this space let's just grow chestnut trees and that way this forester is going to have something to focus on we can replant all of this space when the water comes back that's going to be great i forgot we had construction here that's the distribution post what was i wanting to distribute i guess books oh man okay hold on a minute <laughs> hold on a minute uh cancel all of this what do we need for a distribution post it's 30 logs, 15 planks. Oh man, that's a bit more than I was hoping for, but it'll fit right there and that's totally fine. We can go and say, give me some wheat in that corner and we can go and say, give me some chestnut trees in the rest of that space. So that'll work out perfectly. We'll have a couple of trees. It's nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy, but it will absolutely do the job and should hopefully provide this district with a, a reasonable supply of, of lumber. I'm not expecting any, any miracles here, but a reasonable supply. Now, in terms of the Golem Island, I guess, I guess we have some choices. I guess we could do this similarly to how I've done the towers for wood storage, where this thing just sort of turns and the, the stairs loop up, but I don't think that's going to look very good. I mean, admittedly, I don't think a giant staircase going up in front of this building is going to look all that good either, but I, I really love this idea. 
I, I really, I really do. I think this is kind of a cool idea. I just, I, I don't know how I'm gonna get beavers there. I, I really have no idea on that one. Uh, but we'll need those. That's for sure. We can do this and this, I suppose. And uh, we'll do some stairs. Oh, I can't do. <laughs> okay, hold on a minute. Uh, oh boy, this might be. <laughs> this might actually be kind of tricky. But uh, let's try. Let's try this to start with, right? So that gives us access to this one. And then maybe what I should do instead is just have them facing each other rather than stacked like this. That might make more sense. But again, I I want the stack. I really do. I really want this to stack. I think it's going to look really cool. So how the hell am I going to do this? Maybe, uh, oh man, what am I about to do? <laughs> what am I about to do here? What, what, <laughs> what is this creation that I am about to make? Uh, this and this, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if this is going to be possible, but we'll find out together. Oh, Oh, now hold on a minute. Oh, wait, no. Oh, I need it to go higher back here. That's that's what we're going to do there. I want this to be like a pyramid going up. So that needs to go. This needs to be a double there. And basically the stairs are going to do this, right? So what I need is my stairs to be higher from back here. Oh, man. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Is, this, is, this is so stupid. But it's going to look interesting, I think. All right, this kind of works. We have some stairs in the front. We have some stairs up here. We have some stairs in the sides. We have this sort of looping around the back. It's just interesting and it's going to take forever to build because it's a lot of gears and planks and metal blocks, but that's that's okay. This is this is fine. This will get built in time. It's going to be tricky to power this thing, admittedly. I've got no idea how I'm going to do that yet, but I mean, maybe we just do a couple of engines out here. I could put one on the roof, that would be an option, but then I'd have to get stairs up to that as well, which, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really, I don't really see that happening. So, an engine might be needed somewhere, it could probably go in front of this, and we could probably connect it one way or other, there's, there's a lot of things we could do. I do have a lot of gaps, and, you know, any, any power connected to one of these buildings will connect to all of them, so... It's really just going to be a case of figuring out how to get, say, a power pole over here. And it's also going to be a case of figuring out just how much power we need. So just to remind ourselves, 150 and 150 is 300. 150 more is 450. Plus 250 brings us up to 700 horsepower. One engine generates 400 horsepower. So two engines would be needed to maintain golem production. And that would leave 50 surplus for maybe a charging station, which might not be a bad idea. And then we need a control tower, which fortunately, I guess, consumes three science per hour to boost the performance of the golems, but it doesn't consume power. So essentially, two engines will consume everything that the golems, or sorry, power everything that the golems need. That actually might be the way to go. Also, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I love this. I actually, actually love this. It looks so dumb, but it's also kind of great. It really is. It's kind of, what does it look like when I zoom out? Hold on, let's turn the, turn the hut off. And, uh, oh my God, it's, it's definitely industrialized that body of water. <laughs> And so the sun rises once again on the Iron Isles, and you can probably see in the background that the water has returned, the drought is over, and interestingly, we didn't actually completely drain this water basin right here. There's still a chance that we might, but it's interesting. It's very interesting that on a nine-day drought, we didn't manage to pull all of the water out of here using 10 pumps. Which is good, because it means that we now have the ability to sustain this colony a little better with those additional pumps. It means that we are not going to run out of water super, super quickly. And it means that we're not going to have to worry about water going into the next drought. We might need some more haulers, though, just to move that water around. But this is good. This is progress. And what's particularly great about this is it gives us power again, which means this guy is hopefully going to be up and running, which means we should start to generate 10 science every 
hour. And we're just going to do this indefinitely. The water never, well, the water stopped at the minute because it's refilling this, this body of water. But once the power comes back, we'll be generating quite a lot of, uh, of science, quite a considerable amount more science than we were generating previously, which was three every, every hour. So we're now generating 13 science. Well, actually we're generating 10 science per hour all the time, plus three science for the 16 hours of the day that the beavers work. So that's not bad. That's a lot more science. That's going to mean that we can get in here and get the golem assembler in not too long at all. We're at 634 right now. Give it another second. That'll go up to 635, 645. So it's, it's going to go up nice and quickly. It's really not going to take all that much time to get us everything that we need, which is absolutely beautiful. Now, I am hoping this district here figures itself out just a little bit. It is struggling to get materials, even though I did set up a, uh, a distribution line from District 1 to District 3. I've got some logs coming down here. It just seems like, uh, it seems like that's not really a thing that the beavers want to be doing right now, which is a little bit unfortunate. It would be nice if they would. I guess we could maybe prioritize the distrib distribution post with uh, or buy haulers and see if that helps us out a little bit. We do have a hauling post here. We do have a hauling post here and we do have a hauling post here as well. Now, interestingly, I guess we want to go and increase the number of workers in the hauling posts. I realize that's something I didn't do. And that way we can make sure that there's beavers working in all of those. We can also set those to be less priority than than anything else but that should give us 30 haulers in district one which should mean things get moved around quite nicely and hopefully it means that we can get some logs in here start to build things we can hopefully get these breeding pods going sooner than later because that's kind of a problem this district has uh well no no growth right now in terms of uh in terms of in terms of childbirth so Hopefully that's something we can figure out. We're up to 880 science. So let's go in and unlock the golem assembler. And this thing is amazing looking. <laughs> that's that's actually such a cool building. I just, I don't know how to power it. I don't know how to power either of these. I've got to be completely honest. I don't know how I'm going to connect power to either of them. But I think that's going to be part of the challenge. I think that's going to be part of the fun of this whole thing. So golem assembler, honestly... I, I'm almost tempted to offset it some way so I can put a warehouse in here. Although I guess I could put a warehouse there. So let's just do the assembler there. Let's do a small warehouse right here. And then we'll go into this and say allowed none except for golem parts, I guess. And that seems like the way to do it. So we'll do something like, uh... oh man, how do I, <laughs> do I want to do this? Uh, we'll go ahead and allow 100 limbs, and we'll allow 50 heads and 50 chassis, and that should be fine. So that'll work out, and actually, thinking about it, what I could do here is a couple of double platforms. I could do another double platform, I guess, and another single platform. I could do some stairs. I could do a path. And oh boy, <laughs> I could do an engine, right? So I could do an engine there and another engine next to it. Somehow connect those together and then bring some power across to this. That seems like the way to go. I'm going to be honest. Just double up some storage here. I think that's what I'm going to do, actually. I, it's it, it seems crazy enough to kind of work, right? It seems stupid in a way. But it also seems crazy enough to kind of work, so I'm 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 kind of here for it. Let's uh, let's do some stairs there. Let's bring this over, and so we'll have a path here. We'll have stairs there. We'll have another small warehouse here, which is going to be set to have uh, nothing except for limbs, heads, and chassis. One hundred limbs, fifty heads, fifty chassis. I'm not expecting to make that ever, but. You know, eventually, one day, maybe. And this, with a little path going across like this. And that's, I guess, how we're going to power the Golem Island. Sort of. I'm Again, I'm going to need to put more platforms in here, and I'm going to need to bring I, uh, probably the power around the back of this building. But 
this is actually going to be quite easy, I think, because all I need to do is something like, something like this, and something like this. And uh, <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually quite pleased about this, just looking at it. Uh, this right here, this guy needs to go here. This just needs to go around. We need a corner section here. We need a straight section there. We need another corner section going into the back of the buildings, which I hope share power. They absolutely do. And then for this guy, it's just a high power shaft. And so that should power everything. And that's a lot. That's a lot of construction. But that is what we're looking for. So you're going to be doing the the uh, the heads. Like actually, you can do uh, you can do limbs, you can do chassis, and you can do heads. And yeah, that should work. That should be everything we need for the golem factory. That's kind of a big deal. That's a lot of construction, though. That is a ridiculous amount of construction. That is a tremendous amount of construction. It's going to take forever, but that is our golem factory or at least it will be and so it's that time once again when i think we can go ahead and leave it there for today and zooming out like this to look at the iron isles is always a bit of a treat it doesn't feel like i've done that much today but we've unlocked a lot of things we did rebuild our entire well most of our water supply for district one into that thing you can sort of see in the middle of the water up there by the double i guess the quadruple water wheels and of course, in the middle, we have the, I guess, the golem factory well underway. The entire framework for the stairs is up. The lower level is almost done. It just needs one more metal block. And the assembly thing itself is about halfway done as well. So really, it's just going to be a case of being patient and seeing what happens with that thing. Although, in the spirit of being impatient, I did add another sawmill to District 1, which is powered by this whole mess that you can see before you right here, and hopefully that's going to help speed up production because we need so many planks for everything that we're building right now. It's, it's kind of nuts. We might also want to go get another smelter for District 2 because metal blocks are just not moving all that quickly although we might need to look into the power consumption of another smelter and see if that's actually something we want to do in this space because we don't want to overload it we don't want to have power sort of struggling in this district because if it is then that means that our science isn't going to go up as quickly as it now is but regardless i think today has been quite uh quite an interesting one quite eventful we got more science we got the golem thing going we got district three going we expanded our water and that's all good stuff so i am absolutely going to leave it there for today thank you very much for watching everybody it has been an absolute pleasure as always and as always i'll see you next time Bye bye